I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today we are going to start our new CKLA unit. Our new CKLA unit is called Animals and Habitats. Today's lesson is called What is a Habitat? So thinking back on the things that we've already learned through other units or things that you might have learned in kindergarten I want you to think about how do you know if something is living or non-living? If you want to pause this video and go talk to mom and dad or grandma or grandpa or a sister or a brother about how you know if something is living or non-living, go for it. All living things need food and water. People, plants, and animals, they're all living things because they all need food and water to stay alive, right? I mean, think about you. What would happen if you didn't have any food or any water? You probably wouldn't be too happy and you probably wouldn't be alive for too long. Most living things, they grow and they change during their lives, so you don't always look the same. Think about if you're in my class, you know that you've seen that baby picture of me and then I don't look the same as I did when I was a baby. I grew up, right? I'm not as short anymore. I finally have hair. You know, you change. <clears throat> Living things can also reproduce, which is making new things or having babies that look like them. Non-living things, they don't need food or water because they're not alive. So what does it mean if something's living again? That's right. It means that they need food and water and that they can change and that they can reproduce or make new animals or plants that look like them. Non-living is what? That's right. Non-living is when they don't need food or water because they're not alive. So on that note, Living things generally live in a place that is just right for them. Just right means that it's perfect or a good fit. You wouldn't want to live somewhere where the temperature wasn't right or where you didn't have a home. So they, animals and plants, they look for that same thing. The temperature has to be right. The plants have to be right. All that good stuff. So here we go. While I'm reading, I want you to look at the pictures and listen carefully to find out about why animals and plants live where they do. This picture right here, you see this is Rattenboro. And he is an explorer rat, and he's going to introduce you guys to many different animals and plants throughout the entire CKLA unit. So, get used to seeing him. Greetings, fellow adventurers. You are here to learn something new, and believe it or not, I'm here to teach it to you. I know you may be wondering what you could possibly learn from a rat climbing out of a dumpster, but I'm Rattenboro, the famous rat adventurer. I travel the world looking at plants and animals and all the different places that I call home, that they call home. I'm going to take you on a special adventure all around the world. You're going to learn about some amazing and incredible places and animals, and we're going to start our exciting journey right here. I know, I know. It doesn't look like much, but it's special to me, and it has everything I need. Welcome to my home. This is the alleyway where I live. Take a look around. What do you see? What do you guys see in that picture, hmm? I see some trash, some bottles, some sticks, a little bit of water down there, probably from the rain. Hmm, let's see what happens next. There are trash cans, litter, boxes, drains, and dripping pipes, old buildings and gutters. It's a perfect home for a rat. It has everything I need to live. All living things need food and water to survive. Survive, guys, it means to stay alive, okay? Animals like me need a shelter. A shelter is going to be something that's going to protect him from weather or danger. A house or an apartment, those are our shelters, okay? Trees could also be shelters, not really for people, but for animals. 
So animals need food, water, and shelter to stay alive. My food comes from these trash cans and the litter on the street. My water comes from the gutters, drains, and pipes, and my family and I have a shelter down under some steps nearby. All these things make up my habitat. A habitat is where an animal or plant lives that has food, water, and shelter. It's true that my home, the alleyway, is not considered a natural habitat like a forest or a pond, but with so many humans using up so much of the Earth's natural resources, some animals have been forced to survive in a human-made habitat. What are the three things animals need to survive? All right, guys, I want you to tell me what are the three things that all animals and thing, living things need to, or need to survive. That's right, it's food, water, and shelter. If a place lacks any of these three things, then it is not a good habitat. Animals and plants usually live in habitats that are just right for them. Just as people can't live underwater or in the air, plants and animals can't all live in the same sorts of places. You don't hear about elephants living near the North Pole on all that ice, and you definitely don't hear about polar bears living in the desert. Pumpkins don't grow in the sea, and fish don't live in trees. That would be funny, wouldn't it? Fish in trees. I can tell you firsthand that rats can't just live anywhere in the world. I don't like the weather to be too cold, and I need to live in a place where food is easy to find. That's why I like my cozy little shelter under the steps. It is warm enough for my family and me. There is always plenty of water, and there is always a good supply of food in the trash. Yum. Let's look around. You might have a park like this somewhere near you in your neighborhood. When he's talking about a park this time, he's talking about a public area where you might exercise, one that might have a playground, but it doesn't have to have a playground. It could just be open grass. People like to spend time playing and relaxing in this park, but it's a habitat for many other things too. The grass, trees, flowers, and bushes in this park need food and water to live. Hey guys, have you ever seen a park? I want you to think about it. If you've ever seen a park, what kinds of plants live in the park habitat near you? you or the one that you're thinking of. I want you to go ahead and think about that. You might have seen some grass, maybe some trees. I don't know. Let's see what happens next. The animals that live in the park share it as a habitat. That includes pigeons that fly around looking for crumbs to eat, squirrels, owls, chipmunks that live in those trees, the bees, fireflies, and mosquitoes buzzing about the raccoons and opossums that come out at night, and even the frogs and the fish in the pond nearby. So, guys, where do you think these animals might find water, food, and shelter in the park? Well, they might find food left behind by people, or the plants or the trees. They might find water in puddles, like a pond or a stream or a creek. And they might find shelter in the trees, or in the ground. Think about animals that bury, down, bury themselves down into the ground. That's a shelter. What do you guys see in this picture? I'm seeing lots of snow. I'm thinking it's probably going to be somewhere cold. Let's see what Rattenborough has to say about it. This is a picture of a place called the Arctic. Do you think you could live easily in the Arctic? with its very cold temperatures and snow-covered ground. Not many things can live there, but later I'm going to show you some incredible plants and animals that do live in the Arctic. What do you guys see in this picture? I see homes. I see a whole bunch of homes where humans could live, but I'm noticing that they all look different. So over here, we've got one that's probably somewhere where it snows a lot. Look at that. It looks like that snow is frozen to their house. Here, it looks like a nice little cabin in the woods with some mountains, maybe some apartments in the city. And this is also a home. Look, they even have a front door. So you see that door there when, that, when, when the bar goes away? There we go. Oh, it's back. Anyway, here's a house that... Looks like it's just kind of out there. Maybe you guys have a house that looks like that. And then here looks like a house in the desert. And they have the sand around it. 
All right, let's see what Rattenborough has to say about it. Most animals have to live in habitats that are specific to them, but you humans be, are very clever. You can build habitats for yourselves. If you want to live in the desert where there isn't much water with which to, to grow food or drink, you can build a pipeline to bring you water for watering crops or for drinking. You can have foods transported to the desert by road or rail because it would be difficult to grow food in the desert, and you can build houses for shelter so you don't have to sleep in the sand. So earlier this year, we talked a little bit about ancient Egyptians and Mesopotamians living in the desert in the Middle East. Do you remember how they farmed and grew crops and survived in the desert? That's right. They built canals. Remember, those? they dug those um, kind of like ditches, but they were made for the water. To, they built ditches that came from, that started at a river or another um, body of water, and they built those ditches that came down like a path towards their homes, and the water from the river went down into those ditches. It poured into those ditches, it making kind of like a little stream, but they called it a canal. Um, so that's how they got their water, and then they were able to um, grow crops in the rich soil that was near the river, okay? All right, going back to Rattenboro. In fact, people like you have been living in extremely hot, cold, and dry places. We are going on an adventure that will take us all over our amazing planet Earth. Over the next several weeks, I'm going to show you some fascinating animal and plant habitats that might be quite different from yours. You'll see some wonderful and unusual places that, where things can live. I can't wait to show you all these interesting places, but first I have a lot to pack because we're going all over the world. I'm going to need a backpack full of gear, so hold on to your whiskers, I mean your hats, and get ready for a marvelous adventure. All right, guys. So, thank you to Rattenboro. We have learned about what a habitat is and what living versus non-living things are and how to tell the difference. So... <coughs> Excuse me. I want you to think, what is a habitat? Okay? We talked about it in the very beginning of the story. And we looked at a few different ones. And Rattenboro, his habitat was in the alleyway. So, if you want to pause this video and tell mom or dad or grandma or grandpa or brother or sister, go for it. A habitat is a place where an animal or a plant lives, but that habitat has to have food and water and shelter, okay? So now I want you to think about, think back to Rattenborough's habitat, okay? Where does he live? He lives under the steps in an alley. Where does he get his food? That's right, he gets them from the trash cans and from the litter that humans leave. How does he get his water? That's right, he gets water from the drains and the pipes and from the rain that, you know, gets into a puddle. Would Rattenboro be able to live in his habitat without food, water, or shelter? No! Why not? Why couldn't he? Exactly. He needs food and water and shelter to survive because he is a living creature and all living creatures need food, water, and shelter. You guys are so smart. <clears throat> all right. Why can't all plants and animals live in every place on earth? Exactly. They have to live in a place that's going to provide the kind of food, water, and shelter that they need to stay alive. Animals and plants live in a place that is just right for them. We, as humans, could not live off of the same food, water, and shelter that those rats do, like Rattenboro, because if we drank from drain water or pipe water or a puddle on the ground, we would probably get sick. And we would not be able to live under the steps in an alleyway. It wouldn't provide us the right kind of shelter. 
I want you to think about what your habitat is. Where do you find water? Where do you find food? Where do you find shelter in your habitat? I want you to pause this video and talk about it with somebody at home with you right now. All right, now I'm gonna answer them so that you can hear about my habitat. My habitat is an apartment and that is where I get my shelter. I have my own apartment where I have a roof and walls to keep me safe from any snow or rain or really hot weather or really cold weather. I get my water from my sink and from water bottles. Um, I get my food. Well, I go to the grocery store and I put food in my um, refrigerator and then I make my own food. So I want you to think how is my habitat and your habitat the same? And then I want you to think about how our habitats are different or the same as Rattenborough's habitat. So take a second and talk it over with people at home. All right, so your answers might not have been the same. They might have varied, but all of your answers should have said something about how we all needed food, water, and shelter, okay? That, oh, and I guess technically Rattenboro is eating the same food as us because it's our trashed food. Funny thing to think about. But now that we are done with our questions, I'm going to go over a word that you've heard a lot in this read aloud, and I just want to make sure that you understand it. So here we go. In my read aloud, you heard that animals need food, water, and shelter to stay alive. I want you to say the word shelter. You can say it like a monster, shelter. You can say it like a mouse, shelter. You can say it in a whisper voice, shelter. You can say it in a deep voice, shelter. Say it however way you want to say it. A shelter is something that's going to protect things or living, living things from weather and danger. It also protects non-living things from weather and danger. So I'm going to use it in a sentence. The two friends looked for shelter when it began to rain. So what other things can you use for a shelter? I want you to try to use the word shelter when you talk about it, okay? So you might say, if I'm going camping, a tent could be used as a shelter. Go ahead, and I want you to talk it over with some people at home or wherever it is that you're watching this video. All right, so what is the word we've been talking about? You're right, it's shelter, okay? Now, I'm going to name a few items and I want you to decide if it could be a shelter or not. If you think that it could be a shelter, I want you to stand up and say, that's a shelter. If you don't think it's a shelter, I want you to stay sitting, and I want you to say, that's not a shelter. Here we go. A house. That is a shelter. Good job. A pencil. No, a pencil's not a shelter. A school. A school is a shelter. Even if we might not live there, it still does protect us from the rain and the cold and the hot. Okay? A cave. It is a shelter. Yes. So if you think about bears or other animals that might live in a cave, it is a shelter. Even if it's not our shelter. Last one. A chair. No, a chair is not a shelter. You cannot live in a chair. In a chair. All right, guys, I think you know what a shelter is now. And I hope you learned a lot from Mr. Rattenborough. You are going to do your um, living and non-living sort paper if you have it. If not, I want you to get a piece of paper 
and you're going to write living and non-living. I'm sure somebody at home would help you write that. And then I want you to draw pictures underneath those two sides of your paper and draw pictures of things that are living and things that are not living. I'm so glad you were able to join me today. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. We miss you very much. Bye.